What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the Chelsea Tottenham a big London derby post-match analysis video and let me know what did you think of the game and especially what did you think about the VAR decision not to send Lo Celso off because I think this was by far the worst VAR decision that the Premier League has made this season. First of all, how did the referee, the on-page referee, not judge that and see that as a red card? I will never know. Maybe he was a little bit far away from the incident. Stockley Park, they reviewed the incidents and I think it was uh, another referee in the Stockley Park uh, room where he watched this incident not once, but seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten times. How on earth could he say and that it's a not a clear and obvious error and it's not a red card? I will never know. This was a leg breaker, a potential leg breaker by Lo Celso. Uh, Jorginho, who got his foot stemmed on by Lo Celso, could have easily broken his bone into two or three parts. It was that bad. It was honestly worse than any red card this season, in my opinion. And I'm not a Chelsea fan, I'm a Liverpool fan, but I felt really, really sorry for Chelsea and for Frank Lampard. I mean, I could fully understand why Frank Lampard was going apoplectic on the touchlines. He was absolutely livid. He couldn't understand how this is uh, not even a red or a yellow card. Los Elso didn't even get a yellow card for this. I mean, it was just play on, like nothing happened. I mean, Jorginho could have break a, broken a leg and his career could have been in serious danger. And I mean, the official explanation was from Stockley Park that they thought Lo Celso could put his leg uh, nowhere else. Like what? When I heard this, I got even more mad. Like how is that an official explanation not to give a red card? I mean, yeah, of course, Lo Celso could have put nowhere else his leg, but into the shin of Jorginho. In, the studs went right into the leg, into the flesh and bones. Oh my goodness, I mean, it's absolutely ludicrous. And what is even more embarrassing and what is even worse is that Stockley Park later admitted, I mean, uh, Jake Humphrey, who is a presenter at BT Sport, he tweeted after the game that they have been speaking to Stockley Park and Stockley Park, the VAR room, admitted that they got the decision wrong and Los Celso should have been sent off. Wow, that is absolutely embarrassing. It's pathetic, it's disgraceful how VAR is working in the Premier League and in England. And what really, really riles me up is that the incident was like two, three yards away from the VAR monitor. Every single ground they spent a fortune overall to get the VAR monitors in installed, implemented. They are tested before every single game. And the referee is just standing there on the pitch and waiting for like two whole minutes. He's just waiting instead of going to the VAR monitor, which is right next to him. I mean, Jorginho was getting treatment on his leg, so he had more than enough time to go there to watch the incident himself, but because the idiots that are in charge of VAR in the Premier League specifically told the referees not to check the monitors. I mean, what on earth are the Premier League doing? Honestly, VAR is a brilliant invention. But the way it's implemented into the Premier League is disgraceful, it's awful. The Premier League, the best league in the world, the most exciting football league to watch in the world. It has the biggest audience, the most fans watch the games every week and they are ruining the fan experience. They are ruining the product that they are selling to over 200 countries with the implementation of the VAR. The referees, of course, will protect the, each other. They are like a closed unit, the closed union, referees union. So if a referee on the pitch decides it's not a red card, the, the referee in the VAR room thinks 
he is, uh, he is my bro, he is my friend, so I'm not going to overrule it. And emotions uh, overrule rational decisions and I just hate it. I absolutely hate the way the Premier League implemented VR. This was the incident that tipped me over the edge. Unless they change the VAR implementation, I, I, I think that it's, it's going to cause so, so much trouble for all the clubs and also for the fan experience, especially in the ground as well. I mean, it's awful. You, you stand or sit in the ground and for two, three minutes, you have no idea what's going on. The, the monitors don't sh show you the replays most often than in most grounds. They don't all shuffle, all show the, the, often the VAR replays. So you have no idea what is going on, which decision uh, or which incident is investigated. And then you just get a text on the screen like no foul or no red card or goal, no goal. And that's it. And that ruins the experience, in my opinion, for... Um, for the watching fans and I, I just couldn't be more disappointed with how they implemented uh, using the how they are using the VAR why on earth are there pitch side monitors if you are never going to use it it just doesn't make any sense in every single league that uses VAR they always go to the monitors the on pitch referee who is watching the game live who is closest to the action should be the referee with the final decision. Yes, give him help, give him as many replays as possible, give him a lot of different angles on the VAR monitor, talk to, uh, talk to him on his ear, but he should be the person who ultimately decides, the, makes the final decision, who ultimately decides whether it's a goal or not goal, whether it's a red card or not a red card, whether it's an offside or not offside. Not some bloke who is sitting hundreds of kilometers away in a room at Stockley Park. And that, that, that just doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. Now, let's talk about the game itself as well, because Chelsea fully deserved to win this game and they could have scored maybe even more than the two goals that they did. A 3-1 scoreline probably would have been um, better and Tammy Abraham lost his form and also he had some injury problems so Frank Lampard made the genius decision to start Olivier Giroud and he was vindicated when Giroud scored uh, probably his most difficult chance of the game because his first shot is saved by Loris and then the rebound is hit by Barkley, it hits the post and then Giroud takes a touch and absolutely fires a rocket into the bottom corner. Hugo Loris had no chance with that to make it 1-0 Chelsea and in the first half especially it was all Chelsea, Tottenham for large, large periods of the game, didn't even come out of their own half. If you just watch the highlights of this game, you would see that Chelsea had the majority of the, of the chances. Yes, Tottenham had a few uh, chances, but not really clear-cut chances. Uh, Lucas Moura had the chance, which was blocked by Aspilicueta. And he, Los Celso really should have uh, got a red card in the second half, but um, Marcos Alonso, with a vintage Marcos Alonso goal, uh, scored um, at the beginning of the second half but yeah Tottenham as I said had a few chances but they, they were just so negative it's a typical Jose Mourinho tactic to just sit back with like five defenders soak up the pressure and hit Chelsea on the counter-attack and Tottenham are not a defensively great team they this is not their game they played a completely different football under Pochettino for like five years so it's very, very difficult for the whole Tottenham squad to adjust, in my opinion, to a totally different playing style and a totally different identity mid-season, during the season. I think that Mourinho should alter his approach and his tactics because it's clearly not working. They got outplayed for large periods of the Champions League game against Leipzig and they got outplayed for large periods in this game as well against Chelsea. So the Tottenham fans must be really worried because the top four or even the top five if Man City's transfer ban or European ban, Champions League ban is upheld, even the top five, finishing in the top five is looking less and less likely each week because of how Tottenham are playing. Because their results have been pretty all right. They won the previous three games in the Premier League. They beat Man City. 
they beat Aston Villa with the last minute goal. So if you just look at the results, you think uh, Tottenham are doing well. But uh, if you watch the games, actually, I mean, Man City outplayed them, Aston Villa, even Aston Villa, who are fighting against relegation, sometimes uh, outplayed Tottenham for some periods of the game. And I think that uh, if Tottenham keep playing like this, and of course they have Harry Kane and, and Hume Son out, you have to take that into consideration. But I still think that Tottenham have some good attacking players. Bergwijn, Lucas Moura, Dele Alli, Lamela. He, they, Mourinho is like not playing with a youth team. Uh, and uh, sometimes he sounds like that in his uh, press conferences. But of course that's uh, just Mourinho deflecting the blame to the injury situation and not, not to himself, of course. Mourinho would never admit that he was wrong in, in um, a lot of, uh, you know, tactical things, in my opinion. And Lampard, this is a huge win for Chelsea. Tottenham got to go back late in the game. It was an own goal, I think, from Rudiger. But that was uh, just a consolation and, and too little, too late. And also, Los Celso got a yellow card in the second half, but he should have had at least one red card before that and probably another incident which could have been a red card as well so Los Celso is very very lucky not to get suspended for this one and yeah let me know what did you think of the game and what do you think about the VAR incident in the comments below and thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this see you later goodbye